Mizzy, did you know when you finish stop growing this way at 18 to 25 years of age that your bones continue to grow a little bit? A lot slower way, but they continue to grow. And so if Neanderthal lived to two or three hundred years of age, he'd have some extra thick skull parts, bones, wouldn't it? And so they think it was a disease. Because <laughs> they're definitely not going to say he lived for 300 years of age, is it? Hmm. That's what he said. Disease and lived to long ages, which they will not accept. Now we go to Neanderthal right here. Let's go back to where this whole timeline starts. Lucy. How many of you all ever heard of Australopithecine afarensis or Lucy? Wow. Okay. Here's the guy who found them. Here's the bones. This is probably the most complete skeleton they've ever found. They found 40% of the bones. They found 40 out of 100 of all the bones. 40%. That's the greatest. I should tell you something already, right? What about this? He says, you know, the knee joint, right there at the knee, it comes off at an angle. It doesn't go straight up. Therefore, that proves it's like a human being. What? An angled femur proves it's like a human being? See, right here's the monkey. See how it goes straight up and down? This one goes off at an angle. A human being goes off at an angle, therefore proves it's human. Remember one of the questions. Are there any other monkeys that have an angled femur? Oh, glad you asked that question. Yes, there are. The ones that dwell in trees, the ones that have curved toes and curved fingers and hold on to branches, those types of things, they have an angled femur. Ah, why don't they bother to tell you that? Because it doesn't show that it's towards a human being. It's just towards another monkey. What's the big deal, right? Angled femur doesn't prove anything. Never has. Or they'll say the following. Well, Lucy's knee was slightly bigger. This was, see, this one's slightly bigger than this one. Well, folks, I don't know about you, but it doesn't look that much bigger, does it? Now, I agree the human, bone, human knee joint's substantially bigger, right? But why would being slightly bigger mean anything? I mean, after all, we got horses out there. We got big horses, little horses. The big horses got big bones in them. That just proves they're turning into a dinosaur. We just haven't figured out which one yet, right? No, it doesn't prove one bone's going to get bigger into another bigger bone become anything, okay? Little horses, big horses, what's the big deal? Now, when you go over to a museum, though, take a look at this one, St. Louis Museum. They put human-like hands on the Lucy fossil. In other words, they reconstructed Lucy and put human feet and human hands on Lucy. Wait a second, they didn't find any feet or hand bones. So how did they put human beings on there? I'll show you in a minute. You see, the purpose of their display for children to walk by, their purpose isn't education, their purpose is indoctrination. You indoctrinate them in a lie, they don't know it's a lie. And so finally, when a creation stands up and proves one lie after the next as being wrong, okay, they say, well, you might have disproved 20 parts, but there's still another 100 out there. Because when you fill people with a couple hundred lies, what's the chances of me covering all a couple hundred in one day? I can't go through all that, folks. But I know people who can do it if you've got enough time. There's the bones they found with Lucy, right? Dr. Minton, PhD in uh, science, okay? He teaches medical school at Washington University in St. Louis. He turned around and says they know it is a misrepresentation. They know it's a lie. And yet he wrote to them, and here's what they said back. The zoo officials have no plans to knuckle on her. We cannot be up dating every exhibit based on every new piece of evidence. What new? You never had feet bones to begin with. There's nothing new. What's to be updated? It was a lie to begin with. It's a lie now. And he turned around and says, the conclusion is we think the overall impression this exhibit creates is correct. That's the purpose, folks, indoctrination. It's just Hollywood. It's never had anything to do with science. British Broadcasting Company, that's how they reconstructed those bones. Look at the look on... Those eyes, kind of like it's thinking, right? No, folks. And other tests that turn on show that Australopithecines have nothing to do with human beings. Got a question for you. Is this how they found the bones all laid out in the dirt, that type of stuff? Well, let's keep going. They did at least find this in one location, okay? It wasn't five locations in five years. But here's the guy. When he reassembles the bones and shows it to people, here's the way he puts them together. And then the next month, he put them together this way. And the next couple of years, he gets put together this way. You see any differences between the way he lays out those bones? Let's look at a couple of them. Does there seem to be a few bones in one that aren't in the other? Well, where'd those bones go? He must have put them down here somewhere, right? Well, let's turn around. How many ribs? How many ribs do you count on those guys? First one, you count five ribs, don't you? Second one, you count five ribs, but they're a whole bunch longer, aren't they? And the last one, we got seven ribs. Well, make up your mind. Where did these bones go? Okay. 
finger bones, head bones, spinal column, just all kinds of changes. They just put up the story, tell you the story they want you to believe, and call it science. Never has been. Even Donald Johansson, look at this, 1996. Lucy has recently been dethroned. It's gone, known to be wrong, forget it, gone. And even he admitted in 1981 that he was trying to jam evidence of dates into a pattern would not, that would support conclusions about fossils which the fossils themselves would not sustain. So known since 1981 there's a problem with this, and 1992 has been dethroned, right? Gone. Lucy's gone. Then how come Time Magazine, 2001, still turns around and puts Java Man in their article and puts Lucy in the article as if it still had evidence? One of my favorite lessons is done by Dr. Brad Harrop, PhD in Neuroscience and Anatomy. It's called, Was Darwin Wrong? I've got the uh, National Geographic article over there. He goes, says, this is what they claim their best evidences for evolution are. Let's go examine each single one. When you see that lesson, all of evolution is gone. You've got family and friends that doubt creation. Go get the DVD that your teachers now have copy of, okay, and get them to see that first lesson. Was Darwin wrong? Here's the evolutionist's best evidence, according to them, in their top magazine, National Geographic. And you won't ever believe in that garbage again from just that one lesson by Brad Harrop. You mean you didn't have to listen to me for four lessons? Well, that's true, okay? It's Hollywood, not science. You see, anybody can tell the difference between a monkey and a human being, as long as you have enough bones or skin to go with it. The less bones you get, the less difficult it is to tell. I mean, take a look at those bones. You think there could be some bones over here in these monkeys that would be similar to human beings? Sure. Especially, remember those uh, ribs they found? They just found fragments of the rib? Hmm, another issue. Is this science when you can turn around and take Rudolph Man, supposedly 2.4 million years ago, and then reconstruct him like that? This isn't science, folks. It's just a Hollywood story. Now, the reason they put feet on the bottom of Lucy is because of this. It's called the greatest find of all paleontology. Paleontology is fossil people, okay? So whole 1900s, this is the greatest find. What did they find? Not a single bone. They found footprints. There they are, folks, in color, footprints. Human-like footprints. In fact, human footprints. They call them human-like because they can't have humans back there because they dated these stupid things to 3.5 million years ago. Why, well, we can't have humans 3.5 million years ago, but we had Lucy 3.5 million years ago, so Lucy must have put these footprints there. That's their circular reasoning, folks. Let me look at the footprints. This is what they put on the front of some magazines. They redrew the footprints. This is not a picture of them. This is their actual footprints that they drew down there as if this is how they found them. Let's go through it. They even admitted that the form of the foot is exactly the same as ours. One person studied the footprints of, hum of human beings that don't wear shoes, and he says they're identical. There's no difference. None of their features suggest that these hominids were less capable bipeds than we are. And they simply said the only problem is if they weren't known to be so old. If they're only known to be 3,000 years old, they're human footprints. 3.5 million, mm, they can't be human. It's just their bias. Now I want to focus in on a footprint. Apes, what kind of footprint do they have? See that toe, the big toe sticking off to the side? That's an ape footprint, isn't it? What about human beings? There's an ape footprint. Here's the footprint they found. The big toe goes straight in line with the other toes, doesn't it? It doesn't stick out to the side. Then how come in that picture they put in the magazine, you've got that little toe sticking out to the side right there? They didn't find it like that. You see how they slip in their little lies to start pulling you off track? Very gentle and subtly done, folks. Very gently. It's not even a good Hollywood story, by the way. That's another issue. Mary Leakey, who found these fossil footprints, she's an evolutionist, can't stand creationist, okay? Prideful to the hilt. And yet she turns around and says, these trees of life, wait a second, with their branches of all our ancestors, is a lot of nonsense. She believes in evolution, but she says, that's a bunch of nonsense. You mean all these branching trees are a bunch of nonsense? That's what she said, folks. Why? Because she knows the fossil record. It's pathetic. And guess what? When they did find the Australopithecines, other, all these monkey-like creatures, they found out they had curved fingers, which is typical of monkeys who live in trees. No big deal. Nothing to do with human beings. Nice book if you want to get it. Go through the technical details. 
Luther Sutherland, a creationist, wrote to Dr. Colin Patterson. Now, Dr. Colin Patterson's evolutionist. He wrote a book titled Evolution. He has seven and a half million fossils in the British Museum of Natural History. More fossils than anybody. So Dr. Luther Sutherland says, hey, you wrote a book on evolution? How come you didn't show any intermediate links? Show any pictures of them, illustrations, things of that nature. Here's what Dr. Patterson, the evolutionist, wrote back. I fully agree with your comments on the lack of evolutionary transitions in my book. If I knew of any fossil or living, now how would a living one be a transitional link? Oh, well. If I knew it, I would certainly have included them. And then he went on to say, I will lay it on the line. There's not one such fossil for which one can make a watertight argument. So why isn't that taught in the high school and college textbooks? Are these quotes from some obscure evolutionist that no one's ever heard of? No, this is England's one of their most famous evolutionists. And if you think that's an unusual quote from an evolutionist, wait to hear about this one. This is from America's most famous evolutionist.